Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation, but most importantly, you for still being here. Uh, it's always challenging to be the last speaker, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, so the, the main point of this uh, presentation is to try to view uh, the circular economy in a more holistic way. We assume that uh, everyone knows what the circular economy is when we start discussing about it. Uh, but it's not always the case, and in most cases when we discuss the circular economy, we're mostly thinking about waste management and recycling. So the point of, of this presentation is to, to see like the bigger picture and try to understand all the principles behind uh, the circular economy. So this is a very complicated diagram. Uh, I'm going to simplify it. It's uh, based on the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And we, we saw part of that in the previous presentation from Philips, and we're going to discuss this part. But before we go into the details, I would like to stay for a bit on the first principle, which is it's the one uh, on the top. So I think it's the principle, the first principle of the circular economy is the principle that it's most often uh, not looked at at, at detail. So, uh, I, I'm going to just quote the, the principle. It's preserve and enhance the natural capital by controlling finite stocks and balancing renewable resource flows. So the meaning here is not to just see how we're going to manage uh, waste uh, in the economy, but how we're going to design products before they enter the economy in a way that they can stay there longer. So this principle actually means three things. either to uh, adopt uh, technology and try to visualize uh, utility as much as we can. So for example, the simplest example could be e-books instead of a uh, hard copy book. Uh, the second part is that when resources are actually needed for the product, uh, a circular economy will try to focus on renewable uh, resources ra rather than uh, not or better performing resources. So in other words, a circular economy is based uh, mostly on renewable uh, resources. And the fourth and the third sorry, uh, point in the first principle, which is also very important, is in the design stage of products, we need to focus on how we can encourage the flows of products to return uh, to the system. So for example, uh, soils. I'm, I'm going to give you an example to make this a bit more um, easy to understand. So this is a, a very small company in South America. They are called CB Pack, and they're uh, they're using bio-based material for single-use food containers. So what they actually did after research was that they found that the, a very specific plant uh, in the in South America, which is called cassava plant, uh, could actually be used since it has a very uh, non-edible starch component. It can actually be used to create packaging. And it's not only that the, the product is designed from a plant that makes it uh, biodegradable, but it's also that the company is uh, coordinating with a local uh, compost uh, company in order to use the waste generated by these packaging cups uh, in order to regenerate soil. So this, this was the third point of the first principle. So in other words, before we enter into the discussion on how we can see the second principle of the circular economy, we need to make sure that we have understood and adopted the first one. So now the second principle has to do with how we optimize uh, resource yields from products, materials, and components throughout the economy. Uh, the the most, most people that uh, at least I have discussed the issue of the circular economy with they tend to think that it's all about recycling. So recycling is probably the worst case in the circular economy. It's like seeing just the tip of the iceberg of what the circular economy actually is. So we, the, the example from Philips is a very good one because we, we see how this circles on the right part, which is the technical part of, uh, of products, whereas the, the part on the left is uh, the biological cycle, which we also heard an example on food waste. So the, the right part, the inner the circle, the most uh, 
the, the biggest the resource yield from uh, the product. So there are a few models that I will just very briefly uh, discuss with you on how we can actually do that and uh, try to produce examples for each circle. So the first one is called the circular supplies, which is pretty much what I just discussed in the beginning, to find a, a supply, a resource for your product that it, it can be uh, renewable or regenerating uh, the natural capital. The second one is resource recovery. So it's probably the most common uh, appreciation that we have of the circular economy, how we use waste uh, to re-enter the, the economy. The second one, the third one is product life extension. So how we can use products again after we think that their uh, end of life has come, like for example with cellular phones, we tend to change our phone every six months or a year, but there is still some lifespan in this product. So in secondary markets, you can expand the life of the product. The fourth one is sharing platforms where Actually, you can uh, the same machinery or the same uh, commodity or service can be shared between different parties. And the fifth one is using products as a service, which is again exactly the example with Philips. They're using lighting as a service, not actually selling just uh, the land. So these are like very common uh, examples of the second principle. And then there's the third principle, which is also very often overlooked, which is how at the end of the cycle, what, what are the externalities of the products? So the externalities have to do with climate change, have to do uh, with uh, effluents, have to do with uh, biodiversity. And I'm reaching my, my final point here, is that the, the 12th goal of, of the circular economy of uh, responsible production and consumption is, it shouldn't be looked at as a simple goal because it actually, if we see the three principle, principles, it actually links to a lot more other of the SDGs. So for example, uh, goal number six, it relates also to, principle, to the first principle and the, the, the third principle. So what is emitted in, in how water is used and what is emitted in the oceans is also something very close to the circular economy. The same goes for goal number seven and the rest of the goals. And I'm finishing with just a, a very uh, brief comment on some uh, main conclusions that we, we had from a study that we did for the circular economy in Greece. I'm just sticking on, on two of them. Uh, there was uh, a need for legislative and regulatory reform and we are very happy to see that the government is now actually, uh, as, as uh, we speak, have their Circular Economy Act uh, in public consultation. So this is uh, very important. And we're also happy to see that the Act includes a lot of these uh, conclusions, like the emphasis that needs to be placed on um, recycling and recovery, recovering of uh, construction and demolition waste, which is a big problem uh, for Greece. And the same goes for, for food waste. I don't want to bore you with the rest. So thank you very much. Thank you. For your